clearly Abraham was the person who submitted to God. Yeah. And in Arabic language, when we say submission, you translate it to Muslim. Okay. Some people, when we say to them Abraham was a Muslim, they think Abraham was using this term Muslim. Now, we're not saying that all the time. Maybe it could be, because you know Abraham when we spoke, okay? It could be we speak Arabic or Aramaic or different dialects, okay? Different language or Syriac. But the point here is that when we say he believed in God, we didn't say like he said he spoke Arabic or something. So when we say Abraham was a Muslim, so meaning he had the belief I should submit to one God alone according to his legislation. So the question we ask ourselves was Abraham, did Abraham have the belief of the Jews? No. Did Abraham have the belief of, I'm, of the Jews? I'm talking about those who made up Judaism. Okay. Or the belief of Christianity? No. Abraham never believed in Trinity. Yeah. Uh, he, he wasn't a Christian then? Huh? No, he was not. Allah mentioned in the Quran, no. Abraham was not a Jew or a Christian. Rather, he was a Muslim, to one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a monophist, and he was never among the polytheists. Why? It's a logical argument. Christianity came not even in Jesus' lifetime, came after the Christian's term was given to them by the, the, the Romans. Because we know the first sects that follow Jesus called Nazarenes. You know, you know that, eh? Nazarenes, which is a... Nazarenes means the place which is Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth is a place, Nazarenes. So, so, so Jesus, uh, Abraham never had the belief of Christianity. Okay. And Allah mentioned that uh, because the Christians at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam claimed that they believed that Abraham was a Jew. Uh, I mean the Jews, they say that. So then the Christians say, no, he was a Christian. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how can you debate about something which you have knowledge of? How can Ibrahim be a Jew or a Christian if Abraham came away before Judaism uh, and came before Christianity? I hear about like Moses and the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Do, do you believe in those? Yeah, I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a revelation to Moses. So you know? when, when he asked like the burning bush, like what's your name? He said like Yahweh or... For example, in the Quran, uh, what you have to understand, what's your name by the way? Sam. Sam, nice to meet you. My name is Shamsi. Nice to meet you, Sam. So, uh, what you have to understand, Allah, Allah told us about the verse. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, وَيَدْرَعَ نَارَ فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي نَأْنَسْتُ نَارَ لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبَسٍ أَوْ أَجْدُ عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَى فَلَمَّا آتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى إِنِّي أَنَا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا أَنَا So Allah mentioned this story that when Moses saw fire or light he said to his family, wait here for me, let me go check if I find any guidance there. Okay? When he approached the light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh Moses, I am Allah. Okay? So we see clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he said, I am Allah to Moses. But Yahweh, we don't negate, we don't affirm or negate because we know, based upon Prophet Muhammad's hadith, that Allah had many names. Yeah, and he has many names. Allah has many names. Knowledge of 99, there's more. The proof of that, the hadith. اللهم إني أسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك الله سبحانه وتعالى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أسأل الله وذي نامز يسأل أو أسأل وذي نامز the names which you have only given to chosen servants all the names which you kept for yourself okay. okay so that is proof that Allah has many <coughs> names okay so Yahweh we don't negate we don't say Yahweh is not the name of Allah it could be as one of the scholars mentioned so Co Yahweh is a, is a name of Allah yeah one of the names of Allah but doesn't only gate Allah is not his name because Yahweh is his name you see what I'm saying? Likewise, one of the names of Allah is Ar-Rahman. Doesn't only gate because his name is Ar-Rahman, therefore his name is not Allah. No, we say Allah's name, Allah has many names and attributes. So is he, I, I remember a phrase, yeah, saying, I am the I am or something like yeah, that. Yeah, according to the Bible, he said, Ehi Asha Ehi. When the Moses ask him, what should I tell them? What is your name? But there's a problem with this text, to be honest. Because the Israelites should know the name of God. So why is asking him what is his name? Because they should know God's name. He knows what is God's name. But also the problem with that psalm, that let us go back to the foundation. That what we're talking about, there's two stories being mentioned in different books. One mentioned the same story, but with different uh, uh, information. One in the Quran and one in the, the Bible. But the Bible one, the problem with it, not because I'm a Muslim, I mean, anyone Christian here can food and we talk about it. Are you Christian, by the way? I'm like a free thinker. Believe in God? Yeah. Okay. But the point here is so, the earliest manuscripts for the Old Testament, which is the five books, including the five books, the earliest manuscript is 1,000 years after Moses. So basically someone came after Moses 1,000 years and he's telling us this is what Moses said, 
and that's what God said to Moses. But hold on a minute, you never met Moses. And majority of people are believing that Christians and the Jews put in their belief upon this person's statement, scribes, who don't know his name, we don't know if it's trustworthy, truthful or liar. So is that the Old Testament you're saying that is... Yeah, that's the story is in the Old like, Testament. Okay. Yeah. You see what so, I'm saying? The New Testament now, like, I don't know. So you're saying the Old Testament is a bit dodgy. Even the New Testament, I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Even, well, the problem is that, uh, uh, the point here, look, back in those days, there was no tape rec recorder. Mm -hmm. There was no video recorder, you see. So in order for us to know what really occurred, you have to have a method, okay? <coughs> That's why Islam comes in with a perfect method, which is what? Name your man. Like imagine Sam, you tell me Hitler did this. I say, how old are you Sam? How old are you by the way? 20. 20. Say, 20? And it's took about Hitler. Uh, I lied, 21. You see what I'm saying? Don't worry, you look young man. Don't worry, I have to lie about your age. Huh? So he says, <laughs> oh no Hitler, let us make it uh, Richard, uh, or uh, what's his name? Uh, Henry VIII. Okay, so 20 and Henry VIII, between you there's gobs. Mm. So who told you that thing about Henry VIII? Okay. Either Henry told you or there's people between you and Henry VIII. Mm. Okay, so in Islam, that anyone that tell us something about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we had a, a, a criteria. Are you, we have to uh, uh, do investigation about him. Is he trustworthy, truthful, honest? Mm -hmm. Likewise, would he get his information from? Mm -hmm. Did he get it from the Prophet Muhammad disciple? Who got it from the Prophet Muhammad You see what I'm saying? Okay. And you analyze it, you know? Trustworthy, you have to ask the people about him before you take his statement. So what about like Jesus' disciple? Like? That's a good question. Jesus' disciple, who's Mark? Jesus' disciple? No, he was not. Who was John? John. I'm not talking about John the Baptist. I'm talking about John who wrote the, the gospel. Okay. Was he, was he Jesus' disciple? No, he was not. The proof of that, when you look to John's uh, end, I have the Bible here to show you that I don't want to make claims. I want to show you something. Uh, and you can tell me what you think about it. Can anyone know all this? Yeah? Yeah. So when you read John here, watch. Okay. Okay. So John here is speaking, okay? He said, then, this is, this, this, no, sorry. This, so he's speaking here. This is the disciple who testified <laughs> of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true so who's speaking here who's writing this information I'm not sure. so basically the people are saying here we so this is the testimony of the disciple who we know him to be what to be we know his testimony is true who is we it cannot be john John is not saying we, and we know him. Sorry. So who's writing here? The question we ask as a Muslim, who's we? So isn't he talking to the person reading the book, like a rhetorical kind of like we? Like. But who's we? John cannot be we and him. Oh, okay. John cannot be writing, because the people that are writing this, clearly, is we, okay? We know him. Who is we, and who is him? First like person, you know when it's yeah, the majestic way like, it doesn't mean the majestic way you're talking about the majestic way not even the majestic win but who is i and i know him okay so then i i heard something yeah that when muhammad was it was revealed this like allah came to him <laughs> not allah came to him gabriel came to him is that correct i don't know it wasn't <laughs> God directly. Yeah, it was. So, it was God's and then God with you. Moses. It was God directly. But <laughs> yes. apart from that, yeah, yeah, I heard that. I don't know. He, he never revealed his name. That was a thing that happened. <laughs> Who was he? Who was in, in the burning bush, he said Yahweh, and then in the cave, um, Muhammad never heard. <laughs> Announced the name. He never said like my name is Allah. No, he says, Anna Allahu la ilaha illa Anna. Gabriel said. No, Gabriel said to uh, 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 you. Mix me to the two. Okay. First of all, let us correct to you that Allah spoke to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly. As well, okay. the story of Isa al Mi'raj when he commanded him with the prayer, it was directly. The story of the Isa al Mi'raj, one of the miracles of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went from Mecca to Jerusalem, then to the seventh heaven. Allah raised him. Okay, okay. so. <coughs> no one had this miracle. <coughs> what was this in the cave? He no, no, it's before. It's after. Okay. But that's why I think to correct you because people, okay. Allah, so Allah did speak to Prophet Muhammad directly. Okay, I okay? Never knew. So they did, so that clarified. Okay. Gabriel, when he came to Prophet Muhammad, so he yes, Gabriel never told him, I'm Gabriel directly. Okay. <coughs> but after that, Gabriel appeared. <coughs> Prophet said, I saw Gabriel in the high rising. And it's a real form mm -hmm. with uh, 600 wings mm -hmm. covering the high rising. Okay? 
And he said to me, yeah, Muhammad, I am Gabriel and you are Prophet Muhammad. So, hmm. okay. wouldn't that be more evidence of like, I don't know, Gabriel, like that saying, I can believe in Gabriel, but I don't know, like, is there even a force behind Gabriel? Because Gabriel... No, Allah sent him, yeah, Allah sent him. Okay. Allah sent Gabriel, yeah. Allah sent him the Quran. But Gabriel never stated that, like Gabriel could have just... No, Allah said to him, Allah said in the Quran, okay. which Gabriel came with, that Allah sent you Gabriel okay. with, with the Quran. Okay. You see, Allah said it clearly. Yeah. Who, uh, and, uh, uh, say, O oh Muhammad, whoever is enemy of Gabriel, then Allah has sent Gabriel to you. Okay? With the truth. And the Quran is being called with different names. The truth, the, uh, the speech of Allah, and uh, the knowledge of Allah, because part of the knowledge of Allah is But you know what I want to tell you, Samia? Yeah? You believe in the Creator. Yeah. <laughs> Correct? And you believe that the Creator, without any doubt, when you reflect upon the creation, the Creator must possess wisdom. Yeah. The fact that we can see, we have a teeth in our mouth, not in our eyes, because we use our mouth to eat and chew. Infinite wisdom, infinite wisdom. Infinite mean... Uh, yeah. Yeah, mutlaq, yeah, without any doubt. Perfect wisdom. So the fact that we can see wisdom in, the, in us, yeah? Meaning that I have a nose next to our mouth. Before, not, we have a nose next to our mouth, so before we eat, we smell food. Mm. Imagine your nose is next to your toes. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Look. So I'm saying, you have what? You know what I mean? You have your eyes front because you walk ahead, you don't walk back. So correct? Yeah. You have an ears wide to hear with them. You have a joint in your elbows. You utilize them to eat. Mm -hmm. You know Allah mentioned the Quran, Wafi and Fusikum Afala Tubsirun. Within yourself there is a sign of God. What is a sign? In Arabic language is an ayah. What is a sign? <coughs> sign that directs you toward something. Mm -hmm. So you are and I am sign to direct the people and likewise us toward the creator's existence mm -hmm. and to know that, that we have a creator. But to be fair, I yeah. know we're on the same page, yeah? Okay. That like we believe in a creator and we've got like an intelligent design about us, yeah? Without any doubt, yeah. But I know someone is gonna say like, you know what, I hate God, I don't believe in him and I think our body is just like an evolution thing. Like, Some, know, like someone will tell you, you and I will believe in the creator. Mm. So that guy put him aside. Because you and I, when we're going to go to the grave, yeah. that guy will not come with us. <laughs> okay. Correct? Yeah. So let us deal between you and okay. I. Because some people, you have to understand, even a murderer and a rapist can justify his action. Yeah. Doesn't mean because he's going to justify his action, therefore we have to accept so it. So how, if we're to like make him sort of <laughs> see something, like, I don't know, how do we sort of change them to think Before we change them, we have to change ourselves. Mm. Correct? Yeah. As an Arab say, فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِيهِ If I don't have 10 pounds, I cannot give it to you. Mm. Let me possess 10 pounds, then maybe I can give it to you. Okay, so let us focus on ourselves. Because yeah. what you have to understand, Sam, this life is temporary. Mm. This life is like a bridge. And no one with a sound intellect and a sound reasoning and a pure natural inclination <coughs> will, will build a house on the bridge. Because the bridge is been made to, for us to utilize it to cross from one side to the other side. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always reminds us in the Quran that prepare yourself. You know, Sam, imagine I've never been in Jamaica before, you know? And uh, I want to go to Jamaica. If I'm a person with a sound intellect, do I do first? I do my study beforehand. It's a safe country. It's a good country. Of course, Jamaica is a good country. Yeah. So it's a safe country. It's a good country, yeah? So you have to do study beforehand. The foolish man, the one who say, when I get there, I will come to know. But so likewise, we're going to die and we're going to travel somewhere else. So we have to prepare ourselves. So if you know the Creator has a purpose, uh, there's a purpose for our life and the Creator created us for a purpose. So let me ask this question. If you want to buy a gift for your mother, would you buy a gift that your love or your mother love? Uh, mom. Your mom. So now you and I, we know naturally that we should appreciate the Creator. Yeah. Correct? What? We should appreciate Him. We should be grateful to Him. Okay. Okay, for example, make it clear to you. If I give you two million pounds as a gift, I say, you know what, Sam? I like you. I had a nice conversation. I'm a billionaire. Right. Two million pounds is nothing to me. Take two million pounds and go. What would you say to me at least? Yes, please. What would you say? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, would you remember me all the time? Yes, please. Of course. Two million pounds, bro. You're the boss. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I will give you two million pounds. 
on a condition give me your two eyes oh no no go because you know your eyes is more valuable than two million pounds mm. so why don't you thank the one who gave you two eyes for free mm. and call him boss mm. Mm. absolutely yeah so give thanks that's it give thanks now we know we should give thanks but the other part how should we give thanks you told me if you want to buy a gift to your mother you should buy a gift that your mother love likewise if you want to give thanks you give thanks the way the creator love mm. and why the creator what the creator did based upon his wisdom and his mercy and justice he chose people amongst us from our kind to convey the message to tell us what is our purpose of life to give us a guideline because <coughs> generally speaking naturally we know what is good what is bad but not in details that's why there's people called the chosen ones the prophets and messengers but again some some people going to claim to be prophets of god but they are liars they are wicked people mm. they are evil people but they are true prophets okay so how can we differentiate between the two is it like is it a racial thing because one thing i'm not too sure about yeah? <laughs> okay. if we like jump out of like everything and go back to like the jews jewish religion yeah and say i don't know that there are chosen people they've got a covenant with god yeah? yeah let's say we jump back into islam now yeah. i know it's in arabic is that like a chosen people is suggested no it's like not a true quran, it's not a true okay. it's not a, has nothing with the people uh, a nation or something even the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the reason allah favored the israelites doesn't mean they are the only believers as some israelites believe they believe no one believed in god except them and everyone is dirty and evil and should be our slaves no we don't believe that we believe they were believers but they are well favored over the other ones okay. like they are prophets of god god uh, favored some prophets over the other prophets so allah favored the israelites but why did allah mentioned the reason because they were manifest also the many prophets were among them However, we don't have this uh, uh, goal is only for the Israelites. No, Allah is for everyone. So who does he favor or does he favor? Allah now, Allah now, because... Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, Allah mentioned the Quran here. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqakum. The most favorable, honorable, in the sight of Allah, the one who is righteous and has piety. Okay. Not because he's skin color, because... And the fact that Islam is, has nothing to do with uh, uh, Arab tribe, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his father, he said, my father will go to her fire. And his companion, Bilal, was from Abyssinia. He said he will go to paradise. He was not Arab, Bilal. Okay? So uh, uh, he was black slave before Islam. When Islam came, free, free Bilal. So the point here is, if it was just for the Arabs, then Prophet Muhammad's father should be in paradise. And Bilal should be in hellfire. No, see, that's clear cut. But my point here is, let's go back to the main point. That is, so the, the, the characteristics of the true prophets, I will mention them and tell me if it makes sense. One of them, they, they were known amongst their nation to be trust, trustworthy, truthful and honest. Why? Why God choose people who are known amongst their nations and, and societies to be trustworthy, truthful? Because if, imagine someone, some me and you, we know someone is a big liar. He can, as my uncle said about one of the guys back home, he said this guy, he lies more than he breathes. <laughs> he just lies, you know, he, you see, he said this guy keeps lying, you know. So he, imagine someone who's a liar and he comes to me and you. And he said, you know, Shamsi, Sam, I'm a prophet of God now. <coughs> me as you can hold him. You, you are the biggest liar, man. You see what I'm saying? So we have excuse for us to reject him because he's a liar. But when God choose, God choose a, uh, uh, they are who are known to be trustworthy, truthful, and honest, you know, the other char characteristics or criteria, they came with the same teaching. Even though they never met each other, generally speaking, when they were preaching on the earth. When Prophet Muhammad was preaching, he never met Jesus. When Jesus was preaching, he never met Abraham. When Abraham was teaching, he never met Noah. But all of them came with the same teaching. That believe in one God. Believe in his messengers. Believe in the last day. Believe through decree everything that occurred in this universe by God's permission and his knowledge. Okay, but they never met each other. So you're saying the character, yeah? The is character. Important. You have to be what, right, trustworthy, just truthful, honest, yeah. So I couldn't God just use someone like, I don't know, a random person who's had the life of sin before. Like, couldn't he, or they have to be of a certain like pedigree? Like. But remember, we said that we can look now if, if, if I want to choose someone as my ambassador mm -hmm. of course i'm going to choose someone who is known to be trustworthy truthful honest his nation uh, amongst his nation correct i'm not going to i'm going to choose someone okay all his life is known to be a, 
a murderer, a rapist, but now he's changed, I'm gonna tell him okay, go. People say no, no, no. Okay, he changed, it's okay for him. Mm -hmm. But for him to convey a message, now we have to be careful. Okay. You understand? You see what I'm saying? People here yeah, do change, people everything without any doubt, mm -hmm. but I'm saying, generally speaking, maybe he will change, but you have to test him as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe when he changes, you test him, if he's trustworthy, you're truthful. Mm -hmm. For example, Prophet Muhammad's companions, they were, they were not good people before became Muslims. Okay? But when you become Muslim, who praised them is Allah. That's why we take from them. Because if Allah praised you, that's it. If God praised you, it's enough. You understand? But the other thing also prophecies. They prophesize about the future. Okay. Now, for example, who knows the future in details? Prophet. God. God, goes, God knows everything. Because the logic dictates, in order for me to make a watch, I have to have a knowledge how to make the watch. Correct? So I don't have to speak about Moses and Jesus and Abraham. If I establish Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet, Logic dictate you should believe what he came with, son. Correct? For example, now if a doctor comes to uh, to me and I have a disease, and the doctor says, you know, I know, I know Shamsi, you have disease, and do you accept I'm a doctor? I said, yeah, I know you're a doctor and you're an expert, and I do agree that you know my problem. He says, okay, take this medication. I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm gonna reject it. People would think I'm dumb. Because if you accept him as a doctor and an expert and you know what he's doing, you should follow his advice. Pro Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 1400 years ago, son. You don't have to be a Muslim or Algerian or nothing. You can observe it by yourself, son. Prophet Muhammad, 1400 years ago, he said, he said, there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man competing in building tall buildings. When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that, son, the Arabs back, back in those days were not known to build tall buildings. Those who were known, the Persians and the Romans and the Egyptians and the Greeks. <coughs> Let me ask you now. Maybe you know, maybe you do not know. Where is the tallest building in the world? <laughs> Dubai. Dubai. Dubai 50 years ago was a pure desert. Let alone 1400 years ago. And who's competing with them? Saudi. In Jeddah, they competed to be taller. How a man that lived 1400 years ago, alayhi salatu wasalam, prophesizing specifically, precisely, in details, something will occur in the future, which is occurring in front of our eyes. And that's what Allah said in the Quran about Prophet Muhammad. That Muhammad does not speak from his own desires, he speaks from the revelation. Okay? Another prophecy, Prophet Muhammad mentioned when he was in Mecca. Because he was in Mecca first, his, uh, his people or the Arab pagans <coughs> were torturing him. They killed some of his companions. He was very weak there. He could, they couldn't fight back. Okay. While he was going through the hardship, he told his companions, you will overpower the Persians and the Romans. The Persians and the Romans, some, they were the greatest empires back in those days. The world was split up into two by them. Some was belong to the Romans, some was belong to the Persians. Mm -hmm. So imagine a man is telling the people in a small city, small village or a town, they cannot even fight their own people, they're scared of their own people. He's telling them, You will overpower the Persians, the Romans. Mm -hmm. Even some hypocrites, they start mocking Prophet Muhammad for that statement. Historically, it is known. After Prophet Muhammad passed away, at the time of his companion Abu Bakr and Umar, the Muslims overpowered Persians and the Romans. Again, how men knew that details? There was no indication. I'm not going to talk about China. You know, maybe China is going to become the greatest and the, the most powerful country in the world. Because there is a science indicating that will happen. You see what I'm saying? I'm, t I'm talking about people they can't even defend themselves against their own people. I'm telling you, another one, Prophet Muhammad mentioned, okay, alayhi salatu salam. He said, there will come a time when you see a woman dressed, but a naked at the same time. <laughs> Maybe you can ask your grandmother. It's known, even in Europe, people never suggest the way they're dressing now. Yeah, they yeah. used to dress with modesty, yeah? yeah. So we, we, listen to what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said. And the reason Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi mentioned that psalm is for you and for me to come to conclusion with knowledge and certainty this man is a prophet of the creator who you and i we accept that we should appreciate him and thank him so he said they will be dressed but naked at the same time now when you walk down the street this is exactly what's happening the, the clothes they are wearing so tight that they change the skin color that's it you see what i'm saying sam what do you think what i said to you so far you know what i'm thinking yeah and i understand what you're saying but does it make sense it makes sense it's, it's logical it follows a progression there's nothing outlandish there but okay. i don't know there, i have to be honest yeah i know yeah. other things that and i don't know much but i know yeah. there's other claims to the truth yeah yeah so there's people 
it's saying like they've got a claim on the truth as well and okay. it's competing information okay. because there's different people saying we've got the absolute truth and for I'm example asking okay what if yeah a chinese man came along <laughs> yeah. and he said i am the final final prophet yeah? yeah and he goes all the way back to abraham yeah. and he says you know china will one day be great he lays down prophecies like that and he does that like i don't know how does that go now like? okay so now the <laughs> You know, in Makashi, what they say, <coughs> if you can do anything, mm. you know what it means? If, if Shepsi flies, well, how are you going to deal with that? So, why we say, look, if there's absolute truth, there's no way anything will go against the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. So, I'm saying, if something is certain, there's nothing going against it. If there is never truth going against it, therefore, we are misunderstanding the, that truth, or one of them has to be falsehood. Yeah. Okay? But what I've mentioned about Prophet Muhammad SAW in Islam, is a clearly makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And clearly going in line with the reality. Because what is the truth? What goes out with the reality. Like now, Sam is standing before me. Is that a true statement here? Yeah, because everyone can see Sam standing before me speaking to him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm sure Prophet Muhammad SAW in Islam go in line with the reality. Okay? So if this, uh, someone comes after, I, I will not believe in him. Why? Because I already established Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet and I know God will not choose a liar or delusion, del 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 deluded person to convey his message. So who couldn't some, oh sorry. No problem, no, no someone problem. say, Jesus, like, we, we can't accept anyone after him. And then couldn't the Jews say, no, we can't accept Jesus That's a good argument. he came after us. That's a good argument, like, yeah. Everyone's saying we can't accept anything Let us analyze us. that, Sam. We're going to set up shop and no one yeah. can set up another But let us analyze that, Sam. Jesus himself never claimed to be the last prophet. Okay. Jesus himself, there is a lot of stuff to tell you, but I cannot tell you right now. Allah mentioned to Prophet Muhammad SAW, your description, your characteristics, and your name has been mentioned in the previous scripture. Mm. Okay? Meaning the Torah. The Torah, because some people say it's, it's Isaiah, it's not the Torah. No. If you check it, the Torah includes Isaiah as well. Okay? So, what we know that there is this manuscript, as I told you, which is the Old Testament, is based upon uh, uh, th th this book, the Old the Testament, is based upon a manuscript came away uh, came away before Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. How many years? Anwar, like? Uh, six, eight hundred years. Eight hundred years before Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Manuscript. Manuscript yeah? But Allah is. But Prophet Muhammad has been mentioned in the book. Watch this. Yeah? <coughs> it's so clear. Okay. The servant comes to glorify the Lord. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Just the Gentiles itself mean the non-Jews. And every prophet that came after Isaiah, who came, he came for the Israelites. Okay? So this man's coming for the non-Jews to begin with, yeah? Then he mentions about the characteristics, yeah? But I want to mention something which is so clear. He said, let the weakness and its cities lift up their voice. The villages that Keda, remember this name, yeah? Keda in heavens. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Uh, so here, let, let the inhabitants of Sela sing. So there's two names, there's Keda and Sela. I want someone to Google Sela, Mountain Sela, yeah? Keda, yeah, one minute. So Keda is a name. Mm -hmm. So this person who is a prophet is coming from Keda. Who's Keda? Here. What's this? Genesis 25, 13, yeah? And these were the names of the sons of Ishmael. Ishmael, okay. <laughs> By their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nabiyoth. Then Kedah. So this man is coming from the lineage of Kedah, not the lineage of Isaac. And we know the only prophet that came after Isaiah from Kedah is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give me your phone, okay? I'll show you Mountain Selah. Because remember, he said, let them sing it. Mountain Selah. Selah is a mountain in Saudi. So historically speaking, no, this, this event and this man never occurred in any place except is a Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who is from the lineage of Qaeda, his name Muhammad, son of Abdullah, son of Abdul Muttalib, son of Hashim. He goes back to Ad, son of Adnan. Then Wait, he goes. So is Muhammad related to Abraham? Yeah. Okay. Because Ishmaelites, the Arab came from the Ishmaelites. Uh, the Arab are the Ishmaelites. They come from Ishmael. Okay. The Israelites came from Isaac. So Isaac had a son called, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, no, Isaac had a son called Jacob. And Jacob, he's the one who is called what? Israel. I've got some knowledge yeah. to gather on like the lineage of people. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand, but, yeah, but I so, think that's, that's so, interesting. Yeah, point. so this one, so so we as a Muslim, what you have to understand, Sam, yeah? Mm. 
I'm not saying because I'm not saying it because I'm a Muslim. Wallahi, I read a study. I've been doing this preaching for many years. Yeah. Wallahi, we have so <laughs> tangible proofs, yeah? Mm. We have many proofs. We have intellectual proofs okay. and we have textual proofs mm -hmm. that go in line with one another. Okay. Logical proofs that when you use your reasons and natural inclination, okay? Which we spoke about. Prophet Muhammad's characteristics, his prophecy. Okay. Textual proofs when Allah mentioned, like Prophet Muhammad, uh, what they call it, um, uh, he's uh, been prophesied in the previous scripture and we can go back to it. I will tell you something which is a powerful thing. Sam, I've been asking this question to many people and every time I ask someone, they let me down. Maybe you're gonna, shall I answer it? Okay. Okay, okay. the Quran is like size of this. Like, you know, maybe it's a bit smaller, but size. Do you know, listen this question carefully, yeah. do you know any book, the size of this book, it has been memorized, it has been what? Memorized by hundred <coughs> million of people who doesn't know, speak the language of the book. To make it clear to you, imagine you and I, we memorize the book, the size of this book, in Chinese language, but we don't speak Chinese. Do you know any book like that? I mean, my army couldn't write, so memorization as well, back in those days, even spoken traditions like poetry, things like that, Vikings used to use memory, you know? No, do you know any book? It must be the Quran you're referencing. No, but I forgot about the Quran side, do you know oh. any book like that? Um, to be, to be memorized by people who speak the language of the book. <coughs> I'm sure there's like a Chinese guy that can recite Harry Potter or something. No, no, millions, millions, not millions, millions, one person, millions. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, that, 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 do you know what that? That is only the Quran. Okay. okay, the Quran, what is what is, is what, what is so amazing about it mm -hmm. that we can bring Chinese brother mm -hmm. or a sister or uh, English or European or American, African, they can read the Quran in Arabic language, yeah? Perfectly. Mm -hmm. Pronouncing the words and the letters perfectly. Mm -hmm. Grammar perfectly. Okay. But when we speak to him in Arabic, even if he speaks Arabic, he will make mistakes in pronunciation. Imagine, to make it clearer, imagine you bring me Shakespeare's poem mm -hmm. and you know what, I'm reading it perfectly reciting it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Then you say, you know what, let me bring that's English that's dictionary. That's so I'm reading it perfectly, pronouncing the letters perfectly. Then I say, okay, speak to me. I said, <laughs> me, where are you? Me not going, me not coming. Me yesterday, yeah. uh, tell me hold a minute, what, what are you taking a mic? You just read English dictionary perfectly, yeah. without any mistakes, <coughs> and uh, Shakespeare's poem without any mistakes. Now you're telling me, me tomorrow not coming. So is it like parrot learning? You're no, learning the point here is, no, the point here is, the point you're missing, that Allah mentioned that 1400 years ago in the Quran, that Allah wala qad yassanna al-Quran al-dhikri, fahal min muddakir. We have made Quran easy to be memorized. This statement is not Muhammad Sallallahu statement. This is a statement of someone who knows about his creation. Because Prophet Muhammad who lived in the middle of the desert 1400 years ago, he cannot come up with a statement that this book I came with, everyone will memorize it. He can't, because why? In order for you to, claim, to make that claim, you have to have a knowledge of everything. And the one who knows that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So my point back here, the only Prophet that claimed to be the last Prophet is Muhammad Moses never claimed, Abraham never claimed, Jesus never claimed. Okay. Rather, Jesus himself with his own mouth, alayhi salatu was salam, may Allah blessings and uh, uh, mercy be upon him, that he said a prophet will come after him. Okay. And that is the prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. So, that is the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْحَقُّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ Allah is the truth. And whatever they call beside him are a force. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, I will, I will make you think about this, because you're not promised definitely, tomorrow. Wallahi, well, think about Islam. Alhamdulillah, many people accept Islam. Forget about the people, you're gonna accept, you're gonna, you can't decide by yourself, Sam. And you'll be buried by yourself. You know what? I'm not, I can't make a decision right no, now. No, no, of course, of course, of course. I have to, I have to like, but listen to this, yeah? Well. Oh, no problem at all. I will give you even. Yes. But I said to you, think about this because sometimes what we do, when you go back to our houses and mix with our family and yeah, our friends, yeah. we forgot about the what we learned. Passion goes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like the, so remember, yeah. you came by yourself. Yeah. And you will live this life by yourself. And you'll be reserved by yourself. And so, therefore, prepare yourself. Yeah. Understand. Okay. Thank you for speaking to me. And you know what? I'm gonna research. Ask the God of Abraham. God of Abraham. Yeah, pray to God. Okay. Pray to God. Well, Let me give you something, please, yeah. as, as yeah. a gift. Do you know what he Thank mentioned you. about uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi not being able to speak? I don't know. What is mentioned about that in the Bible as well? Speak, yeah, not speak, no, to write. To write. To, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he cannot read. Yeah, there's, there's a prophecy that a book will be given to someone who cannot read. Okay. A book. And we know, historically speaking, that not, never happened except with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I cannot read. 
Why, but wasn't that written after Muhammad? Isn't it written in the Bible as well, actually? No, no, that was written before Prophet yeah. His prophecy. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Okay. This is a nice gift okay. for me. Thank you. Sam, where, where yeah. are you from? Jamaica. That's that's country, that's, yeah. I gave an example yeah. about Jamaica, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See? See the like, <laughs> Caribbean I, I, I had to say, had to say <laughs> Jamaica is a good country, you know? Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I always give, mention Jamaica as an example, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Jamaica right is a beautiful one. country. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna you know go. What? Let's talk again, yeah? I'm gonna Inshallah. read Can you take my number down? Okay, We'll change numbers, no problem. Because while I like, you know me, I tell you, I come here, not just to waste my time, you know? And well, I always mention, Sometimes this place puts me off because when I speak to some people who doesn't listen, stubborn, yeah, but when I listen to someone who is honest, open, that motivates me to come back again. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So let me take your number uh, yeah. and, and, uh, uh, and I will stop you, inshallah.